So by now, everyone has heard about the horrific chain of tragedies that transpired throughout the week. The first one was Alton Sterling, who is a 37-year-old man from Louisiana who was shot and killed by police officers. The second was Philando Castile, who is a 32-year-old man who was shot and killed by a police officer. And to top it all off, we had five police officers in Dallas that were shot and killed and seven that were injured. So I'm going to talk about all of this uh, because I think this is, it's a really important topic to discuss. And if you go to social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, uh, you're going to see what I think is a false dichotomy. You're going to see people aligned with Black Lives Matter, and then you're going to see people aligned with Blue Lives Matter. Uh, and you don't have to take a side. It's a false dichotomy because it doesn't exist. You can be against the violence in all cases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the events that unfolded, which even though you guys already knew, I think that it's important to revisit it to give anyone context who doesn't know. So it started with Alton Sterling, and he was selling CDs outside of a convenience store to which he had permission from the owner to do so. And police officers in Louisiana received a uh, report saying that someone was threatening people with a gun. Now, we have no idea if that actually was Alton Sterling. So what happened is there was police officers that arrived. They were trying to arrest him and he was resisting arrest and they ended up killing him. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the video of that. But first, I'll get to Philando Castile. So this is someone who was stopped because he had a broken taillight. So a police officer pulled him over and the police officer had asked for his ID, which was in his wallet, which was in a compartment in his car next to a gun, which he had a license for. So as he was reaching for his ID, he was telling the officer, uh, you know, I have a gun right here. I do have a license for it, uh, but I'm going to grab my ID. And what happened was as he reached for his ID, he was shot and killed by a police officer and his girlfriend live streamed it as he was dying. So here's the videos. Be warned, they are incredibly disturbing. pulled over for a busted tail light in the back and the police just he's 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 covered he they killed my boyfriend he's licensed he's carried to he's licensed to carry he was trying to get out his id and his wallet out his um pocket and he let the officer know that he was re he had a firearm and he was reaching for his wallet and the officer just shot him in his arm we're waiting for a back. I will, sir. No worries. I will. Fuck. He just shot his arm off. We got pulled yeah. over on Larpener. I told him not to reach for it. I told him to get his hand open. He had. You told him to get his ID, sir, and his driver's license. Oh my God! Please don't tell me he's dead. Please don't tell me my boyfriend just went like that. Keep your hands where they are, please. Yes, I will, sir. I'll keep my hands where they are. Please don't tell me this, Lord. Please, Jesus, don't tell me. Now, the officers that killed Alton were investigated five different times between the two of them within the span of seven years. So there's a history of instability, and we have reason to believe that they were unfit for duty. Now, also, when it comes to the issue with Philando Castile, his girlfriend said that uh, she was in the back of the cop car while other cops came and were consoling the cop who shot and killed her boyfriend and saying he's going to be okay, even though she just lost her boyfriend. Now, the attorney general in Louisiana announced that a civil rights investigation will be opened up over the death of Alton Sterling, and Obama stated that the Justice Department would be looking into the Philando Castile case. Now, because of the death of these two men, uh, there were protests that erupted throughout the country, uh, basically in every major city. And at one peaceful protest in Dallas, five police officers were sniped and seven others were injured, making it the deadliest incident for law enforcement since 9-11. Now, the suspect specifically targeted police officers. He said he wanted to kill white people and specifically wanted to kill uh, white police officers. Uh, and contrary to popular belief, he was not a part of Black Lives Matter. Now, there are a ton of people on the right who are 
trying to pin this on Black Lives Matter and saying, look, now they're a terrorist organization. They're doing violence against police officers. This is horrible. But they're really misinformed because if you actually look at the details, Black Lives Matter is not responsible for this. The protesters were peaceful and the police officers were they're uh, supervising the protest, making sure it remained peaceful. They were very cordial with the protesters. There were pictures being taken of the police officers and the protesters together. So this is a lone individual who decided that he wanted to uh, seek out retribution for the deaths of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, and he decided to kill five police officers. It's horrific. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Right-wingers are saying, look, Black Lives Matter, they're violent. If you look at some of the videos, you can see them chanting, you know, violent rhetoric against the police. They're saying pigs in a blanket, fry like bacon. But those are isolated instances. By and large, Black Lives Matter is a peaceful movement. If you look at the actual Black Lives Matter website, they're nonviolent. They believe in a political change through nonviolent political means. And you can't condemn the entire organization for the isolated incidents of a couple of people who are not in the right, who are wrong, who are encouraging violence and cheering this on. Here's the thing, we can't generalize. Generalizations are not helpful, they do nothing. So you can't generalize that all Black Lives Matter activists are violent and want to harm police officers, but you also can't generalize and say that all police officers want to harm African American citizens and Native American citizens, because that's also not true. Now, with that being said, you have to look at the statistics. We need to make sure that police officers are protected, that they don't have to feel afraid when they go to work, but at the same time, we have to make sure that African American citizens aren't terrified every time they're pulled over by the police. You shouldn't fear for your life when a police officer comes up to your car for a routine traffic stop. I mean, they're here to protect and serve. So the fact that African American and Native American citizens feel as though they're going to be executed every time they're pulled over, it's not acceptable. So statistically speaking, African Americans and Native Americans are disproportionately more likely to be killed by the police than white people. That's just a fact. And we have to look at that and we have to come up with solutions to reform our criminal justice system so that way this isn't the case. Now, furthermore, for every 1,000 people killed by the police, only one officer is convicted. And although police brutality is an issue in other countries, particularly against minority communities, Brazil is, is an example that comes to mind, the U.S. police, they kill citizens at 70 times the rate of other first world countries. So clearly there's a problem. Clearly some new training techniques are needed. Now, this has been going on for decades and, you know, the problem has gotten worse. And the fact that we haven't had criminal justice reform has kind of brought this issue to a boiling point. Now, every time I talk about police brutality, specifically with respect to the African-American community, what's the number one thing that conservatives will retort with? They'll say, what about black on black crime? Do you not care about that? Well, of course I care about that. You know, just like black on black crime is an issue, however, so is white on white crime. And when you say that, you're kind of dismissing the issue and saying, well, you know, maybe they need to stop black on black crime first. Look, here's the thing. So if you're a small government conservative, uh, then you should be absolutely terrified at the fact that the U.S. government and their employees, which are police officers, kill civilians at a higher rate than other first world countries. It's it's tyrannical. So there's something really unique to be said about police brutality against minority communities. Now, with that being said, it's also the case that we can't overgeneralize against police officers as well. Not all of them are bad. The overwhelming majority are, they're good. They actually do want to help and serve their communities. But the problem is that when you see these kinds of statistics, you can't help but internalize that as someone from the African-American community and think, maybe I'm going to be next. I don't know what the solution will be. All I know is that I don't want African-American people to be killed by the police so much. I don't want Native Americans to be killed by the police. I don't want them to be afraid every time they leave their house and are pulled over by the police. I want to stop that. But I also know that these police officers who were slaughtered in Dallas, they have families. They were there helping the protesters. They were making sure that everything remained peaceful and they were killed for no reason at all. So this doesn't have to be a zero sum game. You don't have to pick a side. One team doesn't have to lose for the other to win. We're not on teams. We're all a member of the same species, the human race. Uh, and I know that's cliche and that's corny, but I'm a humanist, so I truly believe that. I want people 
to be peaceful. I don't, I, I, the violence is horrible. They have to get justice. The police officers who murdered these two African American citizens in cold blood, yes, they murdered them. They have to be brought to justice. Now, second, we need criminal justice reform. We have to train police officers and sensitize them to communities that are disproportionately uh, African American, Latino, and Native American. We have to understand that everyone has underlying racial biases. These police officers are no different. So we have to keep that in mind while we're training them and teach them to not act on that. Uh, on a split second when they're terrified and whatnot. So new training is in play, and I'll tell you why that's needed in a second. Uh, now we also need to ensure that the message is clear. Violence is never acceptable. If you're a police officer, it's not acceptable to kill an innocent civilian. If you are someone who's angry with the police, you have zero right to harm anyone or kill anyone. It's not acceptable. It's never acceptable. It's not going to be productive. It's counterproductive. Uh, and whatever message you had, you just destroyed it. So violence is never okay. I'm never going to be on the side of violence ever. Now, there are studies that illustrate how racial biases affect people in their decision making. So a 2000 study by Coral Park, Judd, and Wittenbrink in which they've conducted experiments to kind of test the prevalence of racial biases in shoot, no shoot situations. Uh, well, they found that reading about black criminals dramatically increased the participants' tendency to make a stereotypic pattern of errors, shooting unarmed blacks, failing to shoot armed whites. That is, when information reinforces rather than undermine the stereotypic link between blacks and danger, bias in shoot slash don't shoot errors increased. So you kind of see uh, the fact that African Americans are thugs reinforced in pop culture. You see it in movies, how they're gang members in movies and how they're portrayed negatively. This actually does have a psychological impact. Now, they also found that exposure to stereotypical images of African Americans, such as them with weapons, increased their beliefs that blacks and danger are correlated. Now, cops are humans just like us, so they're not exempt from this type of bias. So we have to retrain them, but we also have to make sure that anyone who is advocating for violence against the cops because of the actions of a few of them, well, that they're condemned as well. So if you do see Black Lives Matter chanting, pigs in a blanket, fry like bacon, we have to condemn that. But we also have to condemn any generalizations and realize that that's just a few people. The overwhelming majority of Black Lives Matter protesters are peaceful. So if you are a small government conservative, then you should be flipping out at these cases of police brutality, uh, such as the Alton Sterling or Philando Castile one, because there's no bigger, more tyrannical government than one that kills its own citizens when they're innocent. So here's the thing. With that being said, we also have to realize that violence is never the answer. So when you see police brutality, the response is not to be more violent because more violence is only going to be counterproductive. So this one lone idiot that decided to kill police officers is wrong and we have to condemn that. But we also have to condemn the deaths of the people who were killed in cold blood, who were murdered. In the end, the divisiveness... It's, it's not good for the country. Anyone who is saying that you have to pick a side, they're wrong, okay? You can be on the side of nonviolence. You can be on the side of peace uh, for everyone. And look, in the end, you know, it's, it's just sad. I don't know what else to say about this. You know, I'm heartbroken.